All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about section 7.2 and 7.3, and we're going to put that on page 39 and 40 in our notebooks. I'm going to do two different videos. I'm going to do one for 7.2 and then one for 7.3, but they're both going to go on these pages. So um, what 7.2 and 7.3 are talking about are similar polygons and triangles. So basically, 7-2 is about similar polygons, and then 7-3 is about similar triangles. They're essentially talking about the same thing, um, except when we talk about triangles, there's some theorems that we have to talk about. So <clears throat> that's why I'm going to do it separately. All right, next we're going to go to our words worth knowing, and we're actually going to add a lot of words. I'm going to add four words, similar figures, similar polygons, extended ratio, and scale factor. So, first things first, a similar figure is a figure that has, so a figure that has the same shape but not necessarily the same size. And we've looked at those things before when we talked about congruence. We said, are these things congruent or are they similar? Things that are congruent are the same shape and the same size. Similar things are the same shape, so like both triangles, but one triangle could be way smaller than the other. <clears throat> and then similar polygons um, is basically a subcategory of similar figures. However, we have to be a little bit more specific when we're talking about similar polygons and making them uh, similar or not. So, they're only similar polygons if corresponding sides are proportional. And we talked about what proportional meant in 7.1. So, corresponding sides are proportional and corresponding angles. Are congruent. So if you want to check to see that a polygon is similar, you have to see that all of the angles are congruent from one polygon to the other. So you have two polygons that you're comparing and all the angles are the same. And then you have to check to see that all the corresponding sides are proportional to one another. So like when you write a ratio, are all the ratios the same? Okay. Which leads us to an extended ratio or proportion. Um, actually, we should change that to proportion. I don't know why I put ratio. Wasn't thinking. Still break. So an extended proportion is just um, where you write three or more ratios equal to one another because typically we should only use one equal sign. If you start using more than that, then it's extended. So this is when three or more ratios are equal. So for example, A over B is equal to C over D which is equal to E over F. So we have three things that are equal rather than just two. <clears throat> and then finally, since we're talking about figures that aren't the same size, however, they are similar, the way that they're similar is by a certain scale factor. And so that's what we wanna define here. The scale factor is the ratio of corresponding sides of similar figures. So hopefully what you'll see is like if we're comparing two polygons 
we have to check all their angles. If all their angles are equal, then we want to check all their sides. If all of their sides have the same ratio, then they're similar. And whatever that ratio is, is their scale factor. So that's what we're going to look at now. So let's go to page 39 and 40. Got Kylo Ren saving my spot. So on page 39, we're going to write some notes. Actually, this is we're going to take the majority of our notes today. And on page 40, we have this sheet right here, which hopefully you have. And actually, we'll talk about scale factor first. So scale factor is how much... bigger or smaller a shape is. Um, it's a ratio of two sides of similar figures. Two sides of similar, and that's the symbol for similar. figures. Now if you look at this, the rest of this is proving triangle similar, which that's uh, technically 7-3. So we're going to skip that stuff for now. We're going to go back to page 39. <clears throat> so on page 39, we're going to talk about our similar polygons. Essentially what you're going to be doing is um, really silly, truthfully. So we're just going to do some examples. We're going to say that triangle M, I know I lied. Let's say instead uh, quadrilateral D, E, F, G is similar to H, J, K, L. So if those things are similar, then if we want to write out um, a similarity statement, so we're going to write the similarity statement. We would want to write out that all of the angles are congruent and all of the sides are in proportion to one another. So our answer, write the similarity statement, we would first list all the angles. So list angles, and they would be congruent. So angle D is congruent to angle H. And I know that because they just match up. And so then I could do angle E is congruent to angle J because they match up. And then I could say that angle F is congruent to angle K. And then finally, angle G is congruent to angle L. All right. After that, we also have to write that the ang or the sides rather are in ratio. So, list sides, and they are all in proportion to one another. So, we would have to match up our sides. We would say that the ratio of DE to HJ. So those two sides, when they're compared, would be the same as EF to JK, because they match up, which would be the same as FG to KL. And notice that like I'm starting with the same polygon every time on top, and then the same polygon every time on bottom, and then these sides match up. And then lastly, because this is a quadrilateral, so there should be four things here, and I've only got three, we have to do the first and last, so DG is in ratio with HL. Okay, so we're just saying that when I compare this side to this side, um, DE to HJ, so this side on this polygon to this side on that polygon, that ratio is the same as all of the others. And that has to be true if they are similar because that's the definition of similar and that's what we just talked about in our words worth knowing. So that's kind of a silly problem, but one that you might encounter. Um, another one is to check to see if something is similar or not. So example two will say, um, are the polygons similar? Now 
And we're gonna have to do a little drawing for this. So, let's try. Something like this. We're going to call this K L N M. And we got 10 and 15 here. And then over here. We're going to talk about W X Y Z. And then this is 20. Okay, so to check and see if something is similar, we have to check two things. The angles must be congruent. So ask yourself two questions. Are angles congruent? Well, they're all 90 here and they're all 90 here, so yes. The other question that you have to ask yourself is are the sides in proportion? And so that's something that we have to check. So um, if I check 10 to 20, is that the same as the other side's 15 to 15? Well, so hopefully you can tell that clearly not because that is half to one. So they're not in proportion. And so since they're not, they're not similar. We can do some algebra with this as well. And so I'm going to do one more with you guys and then we'll be done with this video. So, example three, algebra. So if we know that um, two polygons are similar, so for example, we're going to say that W, X, Y, Z is similar to R, S, T, Z. And we have this picture here to go off of, so. Okay, so if I wanted to solve for x and y here, we need to know two things. Again, since these are similar, all of the angles are congruent, and then all the sides are in proportion to one another. So if I look at x, x is talking about a side, I need to set up some proportions. So x and 20 are corresponding sides, so I can write the ratio x over 20, and that would be the same as comparing two other corresponding sides. So the only other two measures that I know are these two, and I have to start with the same polygon. So since I started on the small polygon with X compared to 20 on the large, I'd have to start with 16 and compare that to 24 on the large. Um, and then what you can do is use some of our ratio skills that we learned in the last one, where we could simplify this, or we could just cross multiply. I think I'm gonna simplify because eight will go into both these, two times up here and three times down there. And then I'm gonna cross multiply. And so I'll have two times 20, which is 40, equals three times x, which is just three x, divide by three both sides, and that doesn't go evenly, so I'm just gonna leave it as 40 over three. And so that's what x is. Now hopefully y is super easy. Y is talking about this angle right here, angle z. Um, angle z is congruent to itself, but it's since this is a uh, parallelogram, it's also congruent to the one across from it, so it's also congruent to angle x. And so since angle x is 80 degrees and angle z is y degrees, y is 80 degrees. All right, I'll see you guys next time.